Hello again, comrades. So, aside from being a cheeky online leftist, I do have a few other hobbies, one of which is playing music. While I enjoy most forms of music, I do seem to have a propensity for music from the late 70s to the late 90s. So, boy was I surprised at what I noticed when I was listening to the band Rush. As you hopefully noticed from the thumbnail and the title of this video, I'm going to spend most of my time here destroying Rush. However, I would like to lead with a little bit of an olive branch. So, Rush, of course, was a global phenomenon when they were in their prime, selling more than 40 million records to date. They have one of the best rhythm sections in all of music history. Neil Peart and Getty Lee have incredible chemistry, and play about as technically as you could imagine. Is that enough of an olive branch? Because I think that's about where my niceties end. While Getty Lee's voice is a shrill screech that makes me want to drive pencils into both of my eardrums, today, I would like to focus on their lyrics. You see, Rush are followers of the unparalleled mind of Ayn Rand. You know Ayn Rand, right? The self-proclaimed philosopher and literary genius? You know, the one born to rich parents that fled Russia the instant her family's wealth was challenged and went to the Crimean Peninsula controlled by the U.S.-funded anti-revolutionary white army and then came back after the turmoil was settled to study at university because the revolutionary groups that won allowed women in college for the first time in Russian history. Then after using the newly implemented education system, got a U.S. visa and moved in with her uber-rich cinema-owning relatives in New York and then used her degree to help pick up work in Hollywood, and then she went on to admonish the system that gave her the ability to get a degree, and of course make fun of worthless welfare kings and queens that take advantage of the wealth of other people, which as we've discussed is something that Ayn Rand would never, ever, for never, ever, ever, never, ever do herself. So now that we've established a little bit that Ayn Rand was a piece of human garbage, I'm sure we'll get more into her in the future. Let's get back to Rush. So, their discography includes an unreasonable amount of bad takes. But today, I would like to focus on a song that I think perfectly encapsulates their entire ideology. That song is The Trees. If you haven't heard it, it's a pretty well-composed piece, which is normal Rush style. But also, in normal Rush style, its message is absolutely disgusting. Now, I know I've preempted this quite a bit, but for now I'm just going to read the lyrics to you, and we can analyze afterwards. They go like this. There is unrest in the forest. There is trouble with the trees. For the maples want more sunlight, and the oaks ignore their pleas. The trouble with the maples... And they're quite convinced they're right. They say the oaks are just too lofty, and they grab up all the light. But the oaks can't help their feelings, if they like the way they're made, and they wonder why the maples can't be happy in their shade. There is trouble in the forest, and the creatures all have fled, as the maples scream oppression, and the oaks just shake their heads. So the maples formed a union and demanded equal rights. The oaks are just too greedy. We will make them give us light. Now there's no more oak oppression, for they passed a noble law, and the trees are all kept equal by hatchet, axe, and saw. Ha! Huh. So, it's hard to know where to even begin with this garbage. Firstly, the idea here is, I'm assuming, to compare capitalism with socialism. Capitalism being the first scenario, where the oaks get all of the sunlight they want because they've earned it. Socialism being the result of the evil, hate-filled, lazy, welfare I mean, maple trees. Of course, the analogy isn't quite one-to-one, -one, but I think we can work with it. So, let's take this bit by bit. Stanza 1 sets up the primary conflict, 
The maples need sunlight, and the oaks don't care. Sunlight, of course, being necessary for photosynthesis, photosynthesis. equates directly to food. So, the maples are starving, and the oaks, who are not starving and plentiful in sunlight, don't care. Now, stanza two is where we start passive-aggressively hating on poor people. Because the maples just don't want the oaks to have the sunlight that they earn by being genetically superior. I mean, working harder in the free marketplace of sunlight. Of course, the oaks want the maples to just shut up and be happy in the dark. They can't help that they like being rich in sunlight at the expense of others. It's not their fault. The maples just need to lift themselves up by their roots. Stanza three is when we see that Rush probably hates civil rights activists as well. Because while the maples in their story, mind you, are actually being denied food, they put oppression in quotes to show that people who use that term are just little snowflakes need to shut up and get on the first boat back to their own country. I mean... They need to stop blaming others for their inability to succeed in the marketplace. Stanza 4 brings the climax of our story, with the Oaks forming a union, as if unions can sign legislation into action. Uh, Alright, I know I said that we could work with this analogy, but come on, really? <sighs> So the maples think that they shouldn't be literally forced to live in darkness when the sun provides consistent and accessible light for everyone. And the only thing that prevents them from receiving that light and living in sunlight is a canopy caused by the oaks. And then they demand equal rights. You know, the thing where all people are given a fair shake at life and they can't be discriminated against by the people that have the power? It's so disgusting. But then, then comes the magnum opus, a truly artful masterpiece. The oppressors become the oppressed. By threat of violence, every tree is kept exactly the same. Because that's how these post-neo-Stalinist, Adolf, communist, Marxist, Pat Orwellian, college campus living, anti-American, jesus heightened socialists plan on eliminating the great white race! So, the point of this song aside from making a lot of money, is to set a scene where the people who are on top are there because they deserve to be there, and that there will always be an undeserving lower class scraping at the heels of the upper class trying to steal that which they have rightfully earned. And for that sentiment, I'm going to have to say to you, Rush, the multi-million dollar band that's definitely listening to this video and has gotten this far. Thank you, by the way. Citation needed. <laughs>